Hello and welcome to a special episode of um, Giddy Knits. <laughs> um, so I thought I would do something a little bit different um, and this isn't going to be a full podcast. This is just as the title suggests, I guess, though I haven't come up with a title yet, but I assume I will. <laughs> um, this, as the title suggests, um, is going to be just a short little episode just to show you my um, acquisitions from Fibre East. Um, I know that I've heard from various other podcasts and a few comments and things that I've seen um, around the internet that not everybody likes to see a lot of acquisitions. Um, and I can understand that. It can be frustrating when um, you haven't got enough, you haven't got a lot of money when, you know, everybody has those times when um, they can't afford to get the nice yarn. They can't afford to get all the hand dyed stuff and things like that. Um, so seeing somebody sit there and show skein after skein of expensive hand dyed yarn can be frustrating. Um, and so because of that, <laughs> Um, I thought I would just do a separate little video for my acquisitions at Fibre East. Um, that way, for those of you that don't like to see lots of acquisitions, um, you don't have to watch it. Um, and for those of you that do get to, do want to see what I bought, <laughs> um, then this is for you. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that makes sense. Um, and I want to put a little... I want to say a little thing first, not that I feel like I need to um, defend myself, but um, just before people start going, oh, you spent a lot of money there, blah, 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 blah. It was my birthday, as I'm sure many of you know. Um, it was my birthday on Friday, the 28th of July, and I went to Fiverr East on Saturday, Sunday the 30th. Now, I asked all my family, my parents, my aunt and uncle, um, Tom's parents, Tom, anyone who would normally gift me a birthday present I asked them in this year instead of gifting me a birthday present would they mind gifting me money so that I could spend at Fiber East and I was very lucky they all did so I got money from my aunt and uncle I got money from my parents I got money from Tom's parents and um, Tom Tom didn't so much gift me money as we there was a particular project that I wanted yarn for, which he um, said that that would be his gift to me, would be the yarn for that particular project. Um, and in actual fact, as I'll show you, he got me something else while we were there as well, um, because the yarn that I bought for the project was actually less than he was expecting in the end. Um, <clears throat> so basically, all of that to say that I didn't actually spend much of my own money at Fibre East at all. Um, I was very fortunate that it fell so close to my birthday and it meant I was able to treat myself with um, birthday money that people had gifted to me, um, which was lovely. <laughs> um, anyway, so that little disclaimer that makes me feel better about the amount of yarn I came home from Fibre East with aside, um, yeah, I thought I would just spend this episode um, showing you the acquisitions that I bought. <laughs> um, so as you can tell, I'm a little bit out of sorts. I haven't quite, I've, I've, obviously I, this is the first time I've done sort of an episode separate to the podcast and actually not having that routine order of things that I go through is, is throwing me slightly. Um, that, and as usual, the fact that I am slightly sleep deprived. <laughs> um, yeah, we've had both boys waking up at night quite a lot recently and they say you get used to it, but you don't. Um, you still feel like a zombie half the time. Anyway, so I have got some, obviously some yarn to show you, um, which is living in here at the moment so that I can get to it easily. And I also bought some um, notions um, and things like that as well that I thought I would show you. Um, but actually, I'll start by showing you this mug. This, if it will focus on it, was um a lovely birthday gift from Arthur um Tom took him into the shop and got him to choose a couple of things for me he steered him in the right direction of ideas that Tom had had and of course everything that he got me was purple I got this lovely mug with purple blackberries on it I got a candle from him which had purple candles it was a purple candle 
um, and they bought a little gift bag to put it in that was purple. Um, so he was very, very happy. And as it turned out, this was a complete coincidence, but actually on my birthday, we went blackberry picking. So it's quite a nice reminder of my birthday this year. <clears throat> okay, so, <clears throat> pardon me, my voice is starting to go already and I've barely been speaking. <laughs> um, I will start with, I'll start with the yarn and then I'll come back to the notions. I think that's how I'm going to do this. Okay, so um, let's start, sorry, I'm sort of looking over here and deciding what to start with. Let's start with, actually, you know what, I'm not going to start straight away. I want to just say that I went to Fiber East with some plans in mind. Um, there was, the boys are home. Um, I have locked myself in the bedroom and it might result in a bit of fussing. Hopefully Tom will get to keep him entertained. Um, so I went to Fiverr East with some plans in mind. <clears throat> I didn't want to come home with lots of random skeins that weren't going to go together, that weren't really going to make projects um, and things like that. And I've got a lot, lot of sock yarn now. Um, and even sort of if I haven't got sock yarn that I've purchased, a lot of the practice skeins that I dyed up when I was um, starting to get create colorways for the shop, um, I dyed on um, Drops Fable um, sock yarn bases. So I'm more than happy for those to become socks for me as well. Um, so anyway, all of that to say that I went with plans in mind. One of those plans was a specific project, um, which I will show you the yarn for. And then I wanted to make sure that when I picked up yarn, I picked up yarn that would be able to go in um, sort of two colour shawl projects um, and specific projects in mind. And most of the time I stuck to that. Um, there, the other thing that I wanted to do, and I wanted to make an effort to do this time, is not to come home with 75, 25 merino nylon bases in everything. And I have a habit of doing that. That is my safe, my safe place in terms of yarn. I, you know, having merino nylon, so 75% um, superwash merino, 25% nylon, I feel comfortable with it. I know I can make socks out of it. I know it will work for a shawl. I'll know it will work for pretty much anything that I'm going to want to knit. It will be fine for. Um, which makes it great to have in your stash. But I wanted to challenge myself. I wanted to push myself a little bit. And I wanted to come home with some slightly different bases. I wanted to try out some new fibres. Um, and that's what I did. So I'm quite pleased with myself. Um, and you'll see as I show you the yarn that I bought where I've made those choices. Okay, right, so I will start with something that I actually purchased for Tom. In fact, I didn't really purchase this. It came, I purchased it, but he chose it, if that makes sense. Um, and that is this lovely skein um, from River Knits. Um, and I think they are River Knits UK on Instagram. Um, I will link everything I can down below. Um, and this is a 100% blue, superwash blue faced Leicester. If you can see the label there. Yeah, 100% superwash blue faced Leicester. Um, and the colourway, which I think is part of the reason why Tom chose it, the colourway is Indian Giant Squirrel, which he found quite amusing. Um, and it is just this gorgeous mix of reds and oranges and greens. It's really, really autumnal. Um, and really Tom's sort of earthy colours that he absolutely loves. Um, and he chose this and he wants this to become a hat, which is fine, it's a DK weight. Um, so I've told him that I will get him on Ravelry at some point and he can have a little look through all the hat patterns and he can choose a DK hat pattern um, for me to turn this into. Um, I've actually got their lovely little little card there as well I can show you river knits um, and they had a really good sort of selection of different things they had a lot of um, BFL it was it was it, the majority of their bases were BFL um, they had some mixed bases as well um, but yeah really lovely colors they had some really lovely colors and um, I think Tom wanted most of their colors <laughs> 
Um, so that was the first thing I came home with. Ooh, upside down label. That was the first thing that I came home with. Um, and that will be a hat for Tom. Um, I gave him the option. I said, I want to get a skein of yarn that I can knit something for you with. You can choose, you know, whatever you want, it's up to you. Um, I was I was expecting him to get some um, sock yarn that I could knit socks for him. Um, but in the end, he fell in love with this colorway and um, yeah, he wanted it to become, he wanted a hat. Um, so that's fine and I'm perfectly, perfectly happy to knit a hat for him. Um, so that is the first one. Um, oh, I haven't thought about where I'm going to put these. Um, I'm just going to have to go down there. <laughs> okay, so then the next thing that I purchased, I'm not actually sure I'm doing this in the order that I purchased them, but just I'll just just show them how I fancy showing them. <laughs> um, were these two skeins. Um, and this is a really lovely sort of um, teal, teal blue. Let's see if I can get it to come up. That's not too bad. A really lovely sort of teal blue, or teal greeny blue, whatever you want to call it. Tom argues that this is blue. I think it's more green. Um, but anyway, um, and this is Socks Yeah um, by Koopnitz. Um, so there's the label there. So this is a 75-25 merino nylon. Um, but I have been watching um, the Stranded podcast, um, Amy of Stranded Dye Works, her podcast, and she is currently knitting a pair of evergreen socks, which are like a lace Christmas tree at the top and then sort of lace, lace socks. And I love that pattern and I thought it would be quite a challenging pattern for me. And I thought that would be a great pattern for Christmas. So I wanted to pick up um, a solid, solid colored sock yarn um, to make those socks. Um, so again, project in mind, and I came home with something for that project. Um, so yeah, as I said, this is Socks Yeah um, by Coop Knits. Um, and I think the colorway for this is um, called Topaz. Let me put one of these down. The reason there's two is because, um, for anyone that doesn't know, the Socks Yeah come in 50 gram skeins. Um, so 250 gram skeins to make a pair of socks. Um, <clears throat> But there's all the information, if I can, if my camera will focus, there you go, yep, so 75% fine, superwash merino, 25% nylon, um, and the colourway is topaz. Um, so yep, so they will become a pair of evergreen socks. Um, and I picked these up from um, Pearlescence. Um, which is a store I've seen around a couple of times, but I, uh, so I, so I think I've seen it at um, Unravel as well, um, but I've not bought anything from them. But they gave, when you bought from them, the lovely little tote bag that they gave. So there's their information as well, perlescence.co.uk. Um, and they, they stocked quite a few different, different yarns, um, as well as um, <clears throat> a lot of needles. And in fact, let's move away from the yarn for a second, because that is something else that I purchased from Pearlescence. And that was, I bought myself a pair of nine inch um, Chiagu sock needles. Come on camera, focus. Focus. No, don't focus. Sorry. Um, there we go. So yeah, the nine inch, these red circular needles, nine inches. I bought three millimetres because that's what I usually knit socks on. And they're not in here. Because I have started using them um, on a project. <laughs> Which amusingly will be a new cast on on, Friday's pod on Saturday's podcast, but you're going to get a sneak peek. So I won't talk about the project too much, but I just want to show, I just wanted to point something out. Um, so there's the needles. I'm sure people have seen these other places. These are um, nine inch circular needles that you can use to knit socks. Um, and I am very much enjoying them. I've started using them. Where did I start using them? I think I'd completed the, I'd completed, um, sorry, let's get this. I'd completed this pink stripe here. Um, so I've used it since then. The one thing I am noticing, which is going to be very, very interesting when I finish them. And that is, and I don't know if this is going to show up. We will see. Um, it is loosening my gauge. 
So this bit here has all been knit on um, three millimeter magic loop. And then since this bit here, it's been knit on these um, nine inch circulars. And I don't know if you can see the difference. No, it doesn't really look like it there. I can see it in person. Um, but it's definitely loosening my gauge. Um, and you can feel it as well. So it'll be very interesting to see how these fit when I finished. Um, but they're vanilla socks, so I just thought it would be a nice easy project to give myself a go on these. But if they do loosen my gauge up too much, then I might have to just, uh, well, I'll, at some point in the future, I will get some smaller needles. Um, because I am enjoying using them. Um, it's definitely faster for me than the magic looping. And the thing I really like is that um, I can pick it up and just knit a little bit with the boys around but then as soon as one of them needs me, I can put it down. There's no, oh, I've got to get to the end of this needle, um, as you have with Magic Loop. Um, so anyway, that diversion aside, back to the yarn. <laughs> um, okay, so the other skein I picked up was from Paper Stories, um, who I follow them on Instagram, and they do a lot of um, Harry Potter colorways. Um, what other colorways did you see there? She had some Hunger Games ones, I think. I think she had one, I can remember one called Effie. Um, I think she had some Hunger Games ones, she had some, so a lot of popular culture, a lot of popular culture colourways. Um, and I fell in love with this one. Um, it took me a long time to choose, I must have gone back to her stall two or three times. Um, but eventually I got there and this, this is what came home with me. Um, let's see if I can get you a better view of it in focus. Um, and this is called Shell Cottage. Um, and as I said, it's by Paper Stories, and it is just this gorgeous, gorgeous mix of sort of very, very pale pinks with the blue, and the sort of the sort of a sandy colour pinks, and it was very reminiscent of seasides and sort of that kind of sandy. I don't know. I'm rubbish at describing yarns, but you've got some blue speckles in there, real sort of sandy pink colours, um, and it is lovely. And again, this is a slightly different base for me. So it's not a 75-25 merino nylon. It is a 75% blue face Leicester 25% nylon. Um, so this will become a pair of socks. That was my plan for it. Oh, wait, well, this wasn't a planned. This was a skein of yarn that I bought because I wanted to buy a skein of yarn rather than I had a project in mind. Um, but I did purposely pick a sock base. <coughs> um, because these will make some lovely Harry Potter socks for me at some point in the future. Um, but sticking with my wanting to try different bases, I did I did go for um, the blue faced Leicester nylon rather than a merino nylon. Um, there we go. And you can all her details is there as well. She has an Etsy shop. Um, but yeah, it's, it's lovely. It's not my colours usually, but it, it just jumped out at me. And in fact, one thing I noticed with my purchases um, at Fibre East was that a lot of them weren't my traditional colours. I, you know, I didn't pick um, a lot of my standard sort of turquoises and purples and stuff that I often gravitate towards. Um, which was a bit of a concerted thought, you know, I, I concerted thought, I didn't make any sense, but you know what I mean. It was a sort of a, an active choice, but it wasn't necessarily... Yeah, I don't know. Um, I just didn't come home with those. Um, okay, so my next purchase that I want to show you um, is... Okay, so this is this was a completely single skein that I have no idea what I'm going to do with yet. At, <laughs> at some point, it will probably become some kind of shawl, I think. Um, yeah, possibly, but I would need to find something to go with it and because of the base that might be a little bit more that might involve a little bit more thought than just shoving it with anything that goes color wise um, so this is fine fish yarns um, and again i've seen fine fish yarns before um, at unravel and i've used i've had a mini skein from them um, but this is fine fish yarns and this is the maven colorway um, and it is gorgeous it is a purple it's kind of um it's very mauve that would be the term. Um, it's a very sort of grey purple and it's got some gorgeous speckles. 
um, see if I can get that there we go very gray very gray purple very mauve with gorgeous gorgeous speckles um, and I fell in love with this and I don't know if you can see how shiny it is there's such a sheen on it um, this is a 70% superwash merino 20% silk and 10% cashmere um, so a completely new base on me but it is super soft and yeah this will have to become something shawl wise or cowl wise or scarf well not scarf i couldn't face just knitting a long 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 scarf unless it was very interesting um sorry if you can hear the crying arthur in the background um <laughs> but yeah so this was my sort of one completely random skein purchase that i had no plans for but I really wanted to get something from Fine Fish Yarns and I fell in love with this when I saw it. Um, okay, so moving on to, yeah, we'll do that one. And I'm gonna show you this one and then I'm gonna show you a few notions and then I'll come back to the last bits of yarn. I think that's my plan. Okay, so this is from Easy Knits. Oops, focus again. My camera doesn't like focusing, does it? There we go, we got there. This is from Easy Knits. Um, and again, I follow Easy Knits on Instagram and they have some gorgeous colorways. Um, and this is on their fidget base, which is 100% superwash merino. Um, and it's called Galaxy. Um, and it's just this very, very gorgeous sort of um, blue with washes of turquoise and purple <laughs> having just said i hadn't really picked anything up turquoise and purple this was my turquoise and purple um but it is stunning and as you can probably see this is a single ply now i picked this up with a project in mind and that is i wanted something to go with the skein of single ply yarn the skein of Madeline Tosh, um, the Tosh Merino Light um, single ply in the Wellwater colourway that Tom picked me up while he was in New York. Um, so these will go together. Um, and I'm kind of planning, I haven't got a pattern yet, so if anybody knows of a pattern where my idea would be perfect. Um, but what I am planning is I want to do one of those shawls where you have um, the majority of the shawl, put these down so I can emphasize it. So you have the majority of the shawl is either garter stitch or stocking stitch, and that will be done in that colorway. And then the edging of the shawl is lace, and that will be done in that colorway. Um, so I want them to go in together, but I want them to be separate. I don't want to do something where they're gonna stripe because there are areas where these colors are only subtly different. And I think there would be, too much of a similarity. There's not enough contrast. That's what I'm trying to say. There's not enough contrast between them um, for that to work. But I think it would look lovely with um, the sort of the multicolored, variegated sort of skein um, as sort of garter stitch or stocking stitch, and then the well water as um, a lace section at the edge. Um, so that was my plan with those. Um, so I'm very pleased with that. I could have bought so much from Easy Knits. They've got such gorgeous colours. They really, really have. Um, and they're very friendly as well. <laughs> Made a lot of fuss of Jasper, which was really nice. Um, yeah, and I don't think I showed you the back, which I'm failing to show you left-handed. Let's try again. There we go. Focus, camera, focus. Um, no. Oh, come on, camera. There we go. Um, so... Um, Fidget is the base, um, which is the 100% Superwash Merino single ply, um, and the colourway is Galaxy. <coughs> um, so that was that one. Okay, so I did buy a few Notion, Notion type things. And one of the main places I purchased things from was um, Yarnistry. Now, Yarnistry were new to, new to me. I did a bit of research on them having discovered that they were going to be at Fiverr East just to see what they did. And they do some amazing things. Um, they really do. They're very much sort of notions and um, knitting knitting things. Um, so they do a lot of stitch markers. 
<coughs> Sorry, let me have another drink. <coughs> um, they do a lot of stitch markers. They also do jewellery and um, they've got these awesome um, wooden bangles with um, needle gauges around the outside. <coughs> and um, they do all kinds of different needle gauges and all, all kinds of little accessories, um, but well worth checking out. But the main thing that I picked up from them was sock blockers. <clears throat> I finally have sock blockers to show socks on the podcast, which is amazing and ridiculously exciting. Um, and even better, they are turquoise sock blockers with dinosaurs on. Um, so I couldn't be happy with these. Um, they're acrylic, um, so she she cuts them herself. So they're, they're hand cut acrylic. Um, and yeah, you can see my window reflected in the background, just for anyone who wants to see. We're on the third floor though, so you can't see anything but sky outside of the window from this position. <laughs> um, but yeah, there we go. So they've got the information etched into them. So yarnistry, um, and yeah, I'm really, really happy with them. So I will be able to show finished socks on sock blockers on the podcast, which will make things a lot easier. Um, and they're also very pretty. Um, but while I was at Yarnistry, Yarnistry's stand, I also picked up, um, which was something that was on my list of things to pick up, um, some more little um, light bulb stitch markers. Oh, come on, focus. There we go. Some more little light bulb stitch markers, and these are just lots of pretty colours. I only have one light bulb stitch marker, and I use it all the time, especially when I'm counting rows on socks because I tend to count my rows for the leg and my rows for the foot and I tend to move my little stitch marker um, my little light bulb stitch marker down the sock as I do it um, so I've been meaning to pick up some more light bulb stitch markers because they're really really handy um, for doing that um, and then I picked those ones up and then I just couldn't resist these ones they're also on the light bulb um, the light bulb sort of pins but these are the glittery glittery acrylic dinosaur stitch markers I mean who could resist that and they are in all the colors of the rainbow and more um, but they are brilliant just little glittery and you can't see any of the glitter there I think you saw it the first time around um, I'm not showing those very well at all go little glittery acrylic dinosaur stitch markers how brilliant are they <laughs> so I couldn't resist um but yeah there's all their information um as well um and they were really friendly and really really helpful um and I'm really really happy with what I got there um so I'll show one more little <clears throat> notion that I bought and that was this um, which is also it's a little progress keeper which I could not resist because it is Totoro um, so for anyone who is familiar with um, Studio Ghibli anime films um, this is the character from my neighbor Totoro and yeah I couldn't resist he's so cute um, and this came from Ovis Yarns and I don't know if you will, you'll remember um, but a while back, I had some mini skeins from Ovis Yarns, which I showed on the podcast. And amazingly, <laughs> I, I just mentioned, when I was chatting to the woman, I just kind of mentioned, oh, I've had some mini skeins from you, the uh, Sherlock mini skein set from you. And she went, oh, you're the podcaster who showed them on her podcast. I thought I recognised you, but I couldn't work out where I recognised you from. And I was like, I was so shocked, because I've, I've never been, I mean, obviously... I haven't got hundreds of subscribers. I'm, you know, I've not been doing this that long, so I've never been recognised when I go out, like I'd imagine some podcasters are. So it was a bit of a shock. <laughs> I was really, really surprised. Um, but it was really nice that she'd obviously, she'd obviously watched a bit of the podcast to see what I was showing and um, and things like that. So that was lovely, and the fact that she remembered me um, 
yeah, it was amazing. So my, my first being recognized in public moment. <laughs> Um, I didn't pick any, up any yarn from her this time. Um, and I think I just got to that stage of the day where I'd got to the stage where I wasn't sure what I wanted to get. And she had some amazing yarns and amazing colorways and amazing bases. But a lot of the bases at the time were things that I just didn't know what I would do with. Um, I need to do a bit more research. I need to have a little think and stuff like that. But yeah, I could see myself buying her yarn in future because it is, yeah, really, really gorgeous. Um, okay, so moving back to the yarn. Um, <clears throat> okay, so I picked up two skeins of yarn from West Green Loft Yarns, um, and they are these two. I can get some decent colours on showing. Yeah, they are these two skeins of yarn. Um, and the way she had her stall, um, her name is Vicky. And I forget, this is this was a completely new to me yarn dyer. Um, most of the others that I purchased from I'd heard of, um, but this was completely new to me. Um, but the way she had her stall organized was very, very clever. So all her yarn was dyed up and arranged in fades. Um, so I'm not, I'm not big on the whole fade thing. Um, I know it's very, very popular out there. I mean, we've had the Find Your Fade shawl that was massive and in fact I still saw loads of people knitting on the find your fade shawl at the booth at, at the show in all their booths and there were a lot of booth samples in the find your fade shawl as well um and it is gorgeous but yeah and I think now you've got the so faded sweater and stuff and, and that again it's gorgeous but I still not sure just the thought of using such little amounts of so much of that amazing yarn just scares me um but anyway my point being that her yarn was set out in these fades, which was amazing because you looked at it and you were like, oh, I could do a two skein shawl in that. I could do a three, a three color shawl in that. You know, everything complemented each other and was close to the skeins that it would go with really, really beautifully, which is why I came home with two skeins, which again, I am planning to do some kind of two color shawl with. <laughs> um, so these are both on a 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon base. Um, but the, so the top colorway blue is called Blue Who, and the bottom one is called Dapper. Um, and this is just a really, uh, just, a, just a very sort of semi-solid tone, not even, yeah, semi-solid um, blue. Um, kind of a a royal blue, maybe a light, a light royal blue. Um, and then this one has got sort of rose, rosy coloured bits, roses and peachy coloured bits um, with the same royal blue in there as well. Um, so these will look lovely together. Again, I have got no idea what pattern I want to do with these. These could be a striping pattern because um, I think there's enough contrast between them that that would be fine. <clears throat> um, but I'm not sure. So again, anybody got any ideas? Anybody see these together and go, ooh, that would be good in that shawl? Let me know, that would be great. <laughs> um, okay, so what else did I want to show you? I've got two more things um, that I wanted to show you, plus a few more notions, and I'm trying to decide what order to do them in. I'm going to finish up with my big project that I'm planning. Well, it's not a big project, but um, finish up with like Tom's birthday present to me. So three skeins for a specific project that I had in mind. I'm going to finish with that, I think. Um, in which case, I will show you a couple more notions quickly. Yeah, because then I'll finish up with Tom's presents to me. That works quite nicely. Um, so I couldn't resist these. Um, and I picked these up from hand dyed, uh, sorry, handmade, handmade by Jude, her stall. Um, made by Jude. Oh, made by Jude. I'm sorry, I completely mangled that. Um, made by Jude. Um, I picked these up from her stall, but they aren't. I think they are. The, I, they are all wound up. Is the maker? Um, I think she was just selling them on her stall, so they came attached to these. So they're all wound up. Is the maker? Um, and I just couldn't resist. You see these polymer clay charms on all the podcasts. And I absolutely adore them. And I saw these and I couldn't resist. So I got 
a pink macaroon and chocolate cake. How awesome is that? And it just makes me hungry to look at it. Get it to show the right way around. There we go. And a chocolate cake. So I just couldn't resist. <laughs> um, but yeah, they were my other little my other little random notions that I bought. Um, and then I bought so the other thing I bought was yarn um, some commercial yarn, some drops, and this is for a jumper, a cardigan for Jasper. Um, I want to make him um, the antler cardigan, um, which is an, again another tin can knits pattern. Um, but I wanted to try out some more cables. I've I've knit cables once, twice before. I did a cape pair of very long time ago. I did a pair of cabled bed socks um, in some completely not sock yarn sock, some some acrylic blend. I can't even remember what it was. They were horrendous and they didn't fit um, a while ago. And then I knit um, for Christmas or just after Christmas, I think for my mum's birthday, I knit her the Declan, the, the Declan hat, um, which is a cabled hat pattern. Um, and I want to try some more cables. Again, I wanted to challenge myself and try, try some techniques that I don't do very often and that are relatively new to me. Um, so I thought I would do the antler cardigan. Um, and I picked up, I picked this up um, and this was a bargain. So this is Drops Nepal um, and it is a wool and alpaca blend. It's 65% wool, 35% alpaca. Um, but it was, yeah, it was a bargain. These are 50 gram skeins and they were two pounds um, per 50 gram skein. Um, maybe two pounds 10, I'm not sure. So I picked, up, I picked up five of these because that's how much I'd need to do just the size. Um, so that was all of £10.50. <clears throat> and then while I was there, I also picked up some buttons um, as well, because I'm so rubbish at picking out buttons. Um, and I can never find anywhere decent to get buttons. So I just thought while I was there and um, the textile garden people were there with their buttons, have an amazing, amazing display of buttons. Let's see if I can get their information to show there. Um, Textilegarden.com. They have an amazing array of different buttons. I thought I would pick up some buttons to go, and Tom helped me choose because, as I just said, I am rubbish at picking up buttons. And excuse the state of my fingernails, if you can see. Um, it is that is actually walnut dyeing that fingernail. <laughs> walnut juice. Um, Anyway, um, I picked up some buttons to go with it. So this is going to be a very simple cardigan. I I wanted to pick a simple colour. I didn't want anything that was going to overshine the cables. Um, and I wanted something quite neutral. I don't often knit with neutrals. So again, it was sort of coming out of my comfort zone slightly. Um, but I think this will be lovely. And it's an Aran weight pattern. Well, it's a worsted or Aran weight. So obviously, being in the UK, getting worsted is quite a challenge. Um, so I've got Aran weight yarn instead. Um, and I thought to myself, it's an Aaron weight sweater. He's only going to be wearing it in the winter, which means he's probably going to be wearing it over something long sleeved. So the fact that this isn't overly soft um, is going to be fine. Um, and I've got no idea what the colorway is called because it just has the number. It's color. It's, it's number six six one eight. Um, but it is just this lovely sort of very neutral um, sort of. I don't even know what to call it. It's kind of it. It looked like a light brown because it was next to a darker brown, um, but it's sort of it's a very sort of earthy, an earthy neutral colour, and that's not focusing again. There we go. Um, but I think it's going to be lovely, and I'm hoping to cast this on quite soon. Um, okay, so I've now got two more things left to show you. Um, and then I will be done, I promise, because this is nearly going to be the same length as a normal episode. Um, but then maybe my next episode will be shorter because I won't have yarny goodness. I don't know. Um, okay, so these last two things are my birthday presents from Tom. Um, and the first 
thing I will show you is the thing that isn't the yarn. So this came about after I bought the yarn and it actually was cheaper than I was expecting, um, the yarn for the product. Um, and we saw these ceramic dishes um, and it is by Emily Cross, um, Emily Cross ceramic artist and designer. Um, and there's all her information. It's gorgeous because she makes yarn bowls as well. And the yarn bowls were stunning. Um, but as I said to the man there, I've got two young kids. I'm not getting a yarn bowl at this stage because it will just get broken if I use it. But I did see this. Um, and this is very clever. So it is a little ceramic dish. Um, it's got little legs. And as you can see, underneath, it has a magnet. Um, it's glazed on top and it's got this awesome sort of dragonfly print and it's got a wash, um, uh, kind of a, a, a sort of a greeny, a teedy greeny wash on there as well. But it's a magnet, so it's a pin bar. Um, and it's magnetic. So, you know, you can just drop your pins on there and they stick to it. And I just think that's brilliant. Um, and he, as, he said, as he pointed out to me at the time, um, you can, and it's got it's quite a strong magnet. You know, you can, but as he pointed out at the time, if you drop your pins on the floor, you can just pick them up with this as well. Um, so I couldn't resist. Um, as you may have seen, I've been sewing up some bags for the shop. Um, and I find it such a nightmare. It's not focused on me, is it? Um, let me close up that while it is. Um, I find it such a nightmare with the pins. I haven't got anything to put my pins in. I just, they get everywhere. And Tom often finds them on the floor. And with Jasper crawling around, that's never a good thing. Um, so I couldn't, yeah, Tom kind of convinced me in the end um, to get this. And I'm really glad he did because it is absolutely gorgeous. Um, so yeah, check out her shop. They've got so many of these kind of little ideas and things like that that are brilliant. Um, and then the last thing I bought, <laughs> or Tom bought me really, is in here. And as you can see, that gives away the name of the yarn company that I got it from. Um, so this is from John Arben Textiles. And I loved that when he bought yarn, it came in this little drawstring project bag, um, which is really cool. So I picked up three skeins of yarn to knit the quill shawl, which is, um, I believe it's a Helen Stewart pattern, um, part of the first shawl society part of the first shawl society but obviously now you can get them as separate patterns um, and I will try and put up a picture up here so that you can see the shawl um, but yeah it's a DK weight shawl um, so I bought some knit by numbers um, in their DK weight um, and I have knit with this before um, I don't know if you remember but I knit my um, Past part two shawl in um, John Arben knit by numbers DK as well, um, and that was in a, in a green colourway. <clears throat> so they don't have colourway names; um, they have numbers. But I picked up these three colours, and I don't know how well these are going to show up on here. Um, but I so I've got these two. So this is kind of a very neutrally, a very sort of neutral colour. And then I've got a lighter, heathery, um, sort of plummy purple colour. And then I've got this darker, um, it's the same shade as this one, but darker. Um, so again, kind of a plummy purple colour. Um, and my plan is for these two to be um, the stripy sections, the two lighter bits to be the stripy sections in the shawl. Um, and then the darker one, um, to be the contrast in the lace um, but I just think these are going to look lovely together and again they're slightly out of my comfort zone they're not bright colours they're much so much more muted palette um, but as I said that is what I was kind of trying to do um, so these colourways are um, this sort of neutral colour is um, number 12 and then I've also got number 86 and number 89 um, and I'll link this all um, below um, but it is it's 100% pure Falklands merino wool um, so it is soft and I, I know I can wear this against my neck because I've got my past part 
yeah, my pass partushal, which I have knit in, I've knit this yarn in before, and that is fine. Um, but yeah, I'm so I'm really happy with these. So this was my present from Tom. Um, was the three skeins of yarn that I required to knit that shawl. Um, and yeah, that's definitely going to be the next shawl on my needles. Um, but I think, <clears throat> looking around, I think that that is everything that I've got to show you. That is all my my acquisitions from Fiber East. Um, and I had an amazing time. There were so many vendors that I could have purchased from. Um, I was really excited to see, as I mentioned before, I was very excited to go and see um, Third Volt Yarns and her yarns. Um, and I didn't come home with any. Um, and that was purely because um, she had some gorgeous colorways, but at the time there just wasn't a colorway there that jumped out at me. Um, which is funny because on her Etsy shop, which I have stalked her Etsy shop for ages, um, there were loads of colorways that I could quite happily have bought and absolutely loved. I think the issue was there wasn't a cut, there wasn't the combination of colorway and yarn base that was right at the time. But I will be purchasing something from her in the future um, because it was amazing. I also really enjoyed seeing um, Truly Hooked, their store. Um, I follow Truly Hooked on Instagram for quite a while now and um, I love her posts. Um, and yeah, so it was really nice to sort of get to see her and get to see all her yarn in person. Um, and yeah, it was lovely. There were a few people who I sort of got to put names to faces to as well. Um, so people that I'd followed on Instagram, um, who I was able to sort of meet and say hello to. Um, and that was lovely. Um, so yeah, we had a lovely, lovely day. Really enjoyed it. And next year, it's actually on my birthday. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to it next year even more than I looked forward to it this year anyway <clears throat> I will leave you there for now um, this was just meant to be a quick acquisitions video where I could show you all about what I got at Fiverr East um, I am planning to record a proper podcast on um, Saturday again hopefully um, where I can show you everything else that I've been up to, all my knitting and things like that. Um, anyway, so for now, goodbye, and I will see you soon. Bye. Okay. What is it? A dinosaur sock. Yeah. Wow, well done. Okay, put that one down. And you can show them this as well and tell them what colour this is. Gay. Gay. Brilliant. Well done. See the pop tag. You're showing them the label. Well done.